Alright, I'm good now. Oh yeah. Good money. Man, man, man. Welcome back to the Be Safe Podcast, man. I am your host, B Cooks. And I am joined by a gentleman that I uh, genuinely respect. You know what I mean? Um, somebody that is extremely creative. Um, someone who's figured out how to monetize that creativity <laughs> um, from an early, early end, I would say, from the beginning. Yeah, was, uh, um, somebody that doesn't keep itself in a box. You know what I'm saying? Because um, I don't think creativity is to be limited. Yeah. You know, in any way, shape, or form, and um, and I want to applaud you for, you know, just continuing to stay the path. You know what I mean, and um, giving people a taste of what you, you know, what you're capable of, man. So, ladies and gentlemen, I'm joined by Wayne. Yo, appreciate the you know what I'm words. saying. <laughs> no, no problem, bro. No problem. Everybody needs a proper introduction, man. So I want to thank you for you know taking time out of your busy day. You know, um, I had a discussion with your creative director and. You only you know, get 30 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> My, our window of, opp- of opportunity is very short. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But, yeah, I want to applaud you for being here, man. Thank you for taking out the time. Thank you for having me, man. For sure, for sure. It's always good to see you, my brother. How's the family? Everybody good, man. That's Growing, what's Growing, healthy, you know, especially under these circumstances, what's going on in the for world For sure, now. for sure. I'm real thankful for that, you know. So, we eating. That's what's good. up. That's what's up. That's what I like to hear, man. Because yeah. it, it, like you said, it has been a tough year. I don't care who you are. You know what I'm saying. Everybody's been affected in some way. Yeah. You know what I mean. So, um, I know that you are originally an Augusta native, correct? No, I'm from New York. I mean, I know you. I mean, <laughs> your adolescence. Uh, well, I mean, I, I mean, when did you come to Augusta? Uh, let's let's say that. When did you get here? At what age? Uh, 15, 16, Fifteen. Okay. 15, yeah. 16. So yeah. you you was you came here. In your adolescence. But I was still back and forth after that. Right, too, right, right. Um, so when you came to Augusta, where'd you end up going to school? Uh, I went to Seagull for a little bit. Then I went to Butler. Okay, okay. Yeah, you did say you did some back and forth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So, um, so Butler, I really, really started like at Butler, I guess. Okay, okay. That's what's up. I really started to like find my... So coming from up north, I know there is... Um, that, is, to me, I would say that's one of the... Fashion, you know what I'm saying? Like yeah. for real, like niggas yeah. really having to put that shit on, probably because it was cold. <laughs> yeah, but, you know what yeah. I'm saying? Niggas got to layer up. You know what I'm saying? No, niggas got- took like that low life shit real serious. So, um, you know, uh, with growing up up north, what kind of influences did you have as far as fashion is concerned? Uh, Fabulous was a big, you know what I'm saying? Especially when jerseys was out, nigga had every jersey. Everybody right, wanted right. to, you know. We used to. Clown niggas for wearing, you know, certain types of jerseys or certain types of fits. You he know he what was saying? a throwback king so, at, yeah, at one so, point. You know, um, so fabulous. I would say, um, who else? Um, well, me, I'm, I'm really like, I'm a, um, I'm old at heart. So I like re- a lot of old school shit. So like Slick Rick, mm-hmm. Dougie Fresh, those guys. Um, so you know, my pops used to like have me listening to that shit. So I used to watch that shit on my own when I got older, and I'm like, yeah, I want to be like them. Yeah, I want to be like them, but just in New York, like everybody get fly, man. It's just, it's just. I mean, like getting fly in New York to me is like when, like it's it's so important to where like you know in the South. What what is something niggas in the South just like for like like maybe like rims. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like they'll, they'll they'll go fucking crazy on some yeah. rims and like. Well, cars in general, you know, cars are really big in the South. Um, cars is big in, are big in New York, but I mean. When I came down here, I really started seeing, like, cars that's, like, souped up. You yeah. know, the speakers and shit. My, my pops used to have speakers in the car. Like, I always knew about, like, having speakers. But, like, when I came here and I seen, like, people with big-ass rims and old-school cars, you don't see that in New York. All you oh, see yeah, is, like, yeah. the, the new cars. Shit, you man, the Benzes. road's too fucked up anyway to be having a big-ass <laughs> yeah. wheel. Traffic hell. But I, I brought that up, to, you know, just to say the importance of what stepping out the house was. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, As far as being, you know, from up north. And, like, that shit's real. Yeah. You know what I mean? You got to come clean. I ain't even have a real coat till I went <laughs> above Virginia. It was like, oh, yo, these are, deg- like, rated by degrees. <laughs> like, like, yeah, like, yeah. I, I got a lot of coats that I ain't worn in a while because I've been down south for a while, even out west. And they don't even get that cold out there. So I really haven't worn a jacket in a while. I'm... Um, now I'm moving to Virginia, so I got to put my my jacket. Back yeah, up. yeah. So, so we're coming down here. You know, uh, at what point did 
was Reckless Rebels the the beginning? Was that the very? Nah, nah. I, I knew there was something prior to that. Yeah, that was my Reckless Rebels, my my second clothing line. I had one before that. Um, <laughs> so when I was in high school, I had this little thing called uh, Preppy Boys Club, and um, that was that era. That yeah, was that time. Yeah, like, was it was the real Kanye backpack era. Everybody, you know, we wore polo and book bags, and that was like the thing. Kanye was yeah, like my, yeah. you know, what I'm saying, Lord and Savior. Um, I'm still a huge Kanye fan, but um, yeah, that that was just you know, that was the thing back then. So you know, it, people, I got laughed at, ridiculed, and then after a while, people caught on. But by then, I was already on to you know other things. But uh, it was Preppy Boys Club, and I made some niggas t- just so creative to just move on. <laughs> <laughs> and I made some T-shirts, and I, I'm like, damn, I, I I was selling them. For, I think I was selling them for twenty or twenty five dollars. And um, you were still in high school at this point. Yeah, yeah, yeah I was in okay. high school. Um. You know the iron on like heat transfers. Yeah, yeah. So I was like, I started doing those, and um, I would just like print, and my mom was blacking on me for uh, <laughs> using all her ink in the computer because she was in school and she used to have to print a lot of like papers and stuff. Mm-hmm. So she used to be wilding on me like you using all my ink, this, that, and the third. You making t-shirts and shit. So um, I was like, I gotta figure out another way to um, to do these shirts. Mm. So I. Was, I, I was just randomly looking up, like, you know, how to start a clothing line. I was doing a lot of form. I was in a lot of forums and, like, Nike Talk and stuff like that. Man, and, um, that was the golden era. Yeah, so I, I really, I was tapped in with stuff like that. So I just, I'm on the internet just looking up stuff, trying to figure out how to, like, make a brand legit. Mm-hmm. So um, I came across screen printing, and then I was like, oh, this, I got to do this. And I, you know, started looking it up and started figuring out things with it. So this and is like 2000... This is like 7, 8. 2000, okay. 2007 okay. to 8, yeah. Yeah, it was 2007. Okay, so you, you graduated to screen printing at this point. Yeah, yeah. So I got my little coins together, and um, my mom's gave me a little bit of money. I, I got some screen printing done. It was so expensive. like, Because you, when you screen print, you got to pay every color of the that's in the design. You have to pay for setup fees for that color. And each color is a separate screen. So, like, this right here is one color, so it's one screen. Mm-hmm. But if it had, like, let's say a white border around the letters, that's that would be two screen. colors. So, that's two screens. Right. So, you got to pay a setup fee for each screen. A lot of places, it's between, like, 30 to $50 just for the setup fee. And then you got to pay per garment. And then it's a minimum quantity. So, I'm sitting here like, damn, I ain't got no job. I, I get 50. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, so, but I figured it out. I got my first run of shirts. So I was selling a bunch of them. So I'm for like twenty five bucks. Um, but the thing is, I had like uh, regular like Gildan t shirts. Not I don't even oh, think yeah, it was yeah, Gildan. I mean, they was like, I was like, yeah, I can't be going out like, like a this. Step above a Hanes type shit. So I went back to my roots and I um I started printing neck tags with the the transfer paper that I used to iron on the okay. front of the shirts. So I was printing neck tags in them, and I was like, this look legit. And then I got some plastic bags, started folding them, and I bagged them. You know, I brought some um, some business cards, threw them in there. This is all stuff I learned, like, just online. and Because right. at the time, we didn't have Instagram. We didn't have – Facebook really wasn't jumping like so that. Your, your I think presentation we had MySpace. was yeah. above the, the norm, especially for the time. Yeah, I think I think MySpace was really, really big back then. Um, at that time that I was right, doing right. that, MySpace was big. Um, so then at, I was just like – And you're still doing the, the original brand at this point, right? This is uh, – this is uh, Preppy Boys Club. Right, yeah, yeah. right. So um, I thought about it. I'm like, damn, I need to come out with um, with a more marketable name. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because that uh, was definitely like Yeah, trendy, I was like, so man, I, I don't know. You know what I'm saying? So I just woke up, and I'm like, you know, people be saying, oh, you a trendsetter, you a trendsetter. So I was like, damn, maybe I should use like, because it was another brand now at the time called Teenage something. It was Teenage Mill something, Teenage Millionaire, Teenage something. It was real big. It was a huge brand, like. So I'm, I'm, I'm in my head like, well, shit. I mean, they using teenage. Maybe I could just, you know, say teenage trendsetters. <laughs> I'm like, not knowing like, long. yeah, I'm not, I'm not knowing like I'm gonna be in 15 more years. I'll be, you know, 30 years right, old. Right, right. So, um, I came out with that. Off, you know, came out with a new, with a new, kept the same aesthetics and things like that. Was doing the same things from, you know, the previous brand. Right, right. Did pretty well, and then I was, you know, it came to a point where I was just like, all right, um. I got to stop playing. I got to grow up. <laughs> and, um, you know, peop- I had took a, a break for a while. And um, just to focus on me, finish school, stuff like that. Mm. And um, 
I came up with the the Reckless Rebel because it was it was gonna be a T shirt that just said Reckless Rebel, and I said, you know what, that's that name is a little bit more, you know, better than um, teenage trendsetters. Or, and, and where'd you come up with the name? I how, be what was a <laughs> I'd be wild. Yeah, yeah, I, I could say. I, be, I mean, I don't, and I don't want to say that to say like I just be out here on some. You know, you know what I'm saying? I just be having fun. You know what I'm saying? I'm just I'm just a person that's really big on like respect, things like that. I don't anybody who knows me knows I don't. I really get into altercations. Mm -hmm. You know, I treat people with respect, things like that. But if you know, if I need to, you know, stress my nigga get reckless if you, if you, you know, know what I'm saying. Like, like shit, nigga, nigga can, to, you we, know, shots can be fired, my nigga. Like, <laughs> nah, no, no violence, man, no violence, man. <laughs> not, not real, not, not <laughs> actual bullets, but you know. <laughs> yeah, but um, yeah, I'm just really big on on things like that, and you know, I, it's certain things that I think we as people should demand and respect is one of them. You know, especially sure. if you're a respectful person. And I'm a very, I, would, I like to say I'm a very respectful person. So, um, other than that, though, like, when I was in school, I used to just wild out and bad as hell, you know, just yeah. not listening, talking a lot, and just being reckless, you know? So, oh, for sure, sure. And, uh, you know, uh, every once in a while, you know, niggas would be like, damn, nigga, you reckless. Like, you be wild and you be yeah. bugging out. You know what I'm saying? I'm just like. So you coined that, you coined the reckless rebel at what point? Where, where are we talking, like? Um... This was right before I graduated high school. So we right talking before oh nine. I graduated oh nine. Okay, okay. Yeah, so, so it was like right before I graduated high school. Okay, cool, cool, um, cool. I was like working on it for a while, but like the shirts the shirts came out like that summer, I think. I think I was already out of high school. It came out this I had some shirts that summer. Okay, um, okay. So we, so you was trapping out the trunk, like you know what I'm saying? Trapping out of my mom's crib with the shirts. I was oh, yeah. on the uh the kitchen table. Sewing neck tags in the shirts, man. Bagging and tagging. You know, every once in a while, my mom would help too. That's what's and, up. Yeah. So, so you was getting money then. You was getting. Yeah, something. it's a little. It's a little bit of you know. You know I mean, for what it was. Yeah, you know but I, mean? I ain't know nothing about like taxes and things like that. And I mean, you know, I had bought I had bought an LLC and I just thought I was the man. <laughs> right. But I didn't right. know like what goes into. Yeah, I ain't know what goes into after that. You know, a lot of people are learning that now too. Yeah, um, I mean, we all yeah, you gotta yeah, yeah. you gotta jump off the porch and yeah, you know, yeah. you gotta learn shit. I and I, I spent a lot of money, wasted a lot of money, mm -hmm. and made a lot of money. And I mean, I wouldn't trade it in for nothing, you know, because it's all a learning experience. And I, you know, nothing bad came from it, you know, um, for sure. But yeah, so you know, I was sewing tags on in my mom's on my mom's uh, kitchen table, and I was just like selling the shirts and shit, and then. Yeah, that that was that was the birth of it. Okay, that was the birth of it. All right, so transitioning, you know, you graduate, you know, you uh, you got the reckless rebels in motion, you know, the the wheels is turning, and um, so you're in college at this point now, right? Yeah, I was so I was going to um, this was when I was at um, Augusta Tech. Okay, I went there for a little bit um, because I had yeah, I went to Augusta Tech for a little bit because I went to New York shortly after that um, after Augusta Tech. I had went back to New York for a while. But when I was at Augusta Tech, I was trapping the shirts, too. Okay. Um, that's when it was getting, like, really, really, um, it was getting really good for me because um, I would use some refund checks and uh, <laughs> make and put it into um, making shirts. I get it. Shoot. Yeah, so I would just get my refund checks and them. Because I, I had enough to get, like, screen-printed shirts and mix up, you know, the designs and make different colors and other, you know, people would be like, well, why you ain't got this kind of shirt or that kind of shirt? I'm, I'm tapped in listening, like, okay, you know, this is what people want to see. Okay, cool. So I had, like, more of a variety of things to uh, to offer at the time. Um, still just doing it all by myself. You know, um, these other social media um, uh, sites are getting bigger now. Mm -hmm. Twitter is getting a little big. Right, um, right. Instagram. wasn't as big as it is now. Instagram, Instagram was starting was, to. Yeah, it nearly, it wasn't even as close as what it is now. Right, right. Facebook was still, like, the main thing at the time because my, MySpace had faded out. So it was solely Facebook at this time. Um, and I was posting a lot of my stuff on Facebook. But I learned how to uh, do online. I, I figured I got a little PayPal account because I used to, like, be buying sneakers and shit right, off right. eBay. So I had PayPal. So I um I figured out how to like make a little like uh big cartel page, yeah. and I would put the shirts. I literally would take the pictures with my digital camera, and like 
white out the background. It was so hard, bro. I, <laughs> I wish I had some pictures to show you. Hear me, hear me, good nigga. I'm here to double down. Yeah, that's what it was. <laughs> that's, a, a that's, that's what it was, man. What the fuck are you talking about? That shit stinks. That's what it was. No, nah, I mean, but shit, that's part of the growing process, though. You know what I'm saying? That, that's so, part of the grind. So, um, damn, what was I saying? <laughs> oh, you you had figured out, you know, you was whiting out the background. Oh, yeah, yeah. So, so the product shots, um, I was, like, trying to copy a lot of... I was trying to copy a lot of brands I seen online and um, just make it look like something it wasn't. Mm -hmm. And I felt like I was just like being a copycat at the time. I wasn't like staying true to, to why I even started the brand. I'm just like, oh, I'm going to make it look like um, it was a uh, BBC and Bape was really big back then. So mm -hmm. I was like, I want to make my shit look like ice cream because I used to wear ice cream. And, right, and BBC. right. I'm like, I want to make my shit look like ice cream. And, you know, not knowing like. In the long run, you have to make something that has longevity. You right, know? So right, I'm just right. like doing it in and now. I really didn't start thinking about the future. Um, right, because you end up, I'm, yeah. you start realizing you're falling into the trend. Not. Yeah, I'm like, I'm making a little bit of money. You know, this this, this ain't going to die out. You know what I'm saying? So, um, yeah, it was horrible. But, I, I mean, I had a couple online sales, and, you know, and then that's when I got into a little issue with the tax, the IRS with taxes and stuff. I mean... It, look, <laughs> we we gotta learn. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, so it, it is what it is. There's a like, lot of online activity and transactions. I mean, it wasn't necessarily <laughs> like it's you was purposely trying to. You yeah, know I, mean? ain't know. It, 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 I ain't know. I know. We just trying to trap this, <laughs> <laughs> trap Word. it out. You know what I'm saying? Get, get it out here in as many hands as possible. Exactly. That's all I was doing. I was just young, trying to get money, man. I wanted I wanted to do it my way. I'm not. I you're not gonna catch me on no corner selling no weed. I'm right, not right. waiting all day to sell nobody no bag of weed. Like, that's not me. You feel me? Right, right, so, right. I'm going mean, to hustle and get bread. Trap don't mean you selling drugs. Yeah, you're right, you're right. You know but, I mean? you know, that's just not me. I'm going to hustle. For sure, for sure. I'm going to hustle what I know how to hustle, you know? And I knew how to... I, in my mind, I'm like, I know how to hustle clothes, you know? Not knowing it was a whole bunch of shit I still had to learn, you know? Um, yeah, but you, I'm, you've... I've definitely watched... You know, despite not necessarily being a part of any creative process, whatever, whatever, I've definitely watched you over the years um, grow with uh, your brand, your, yeah. your your presentation, marketing. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Um, even branching out to things like, um, like simply by design. Like I didn't know, like what is yeah. the proper term for what you do? Is it like product so rendering? I'm, um, so like, um, what is the? I hate to use the term creative director. Um, it's just because that's just. Too vaguely used and too loosely mm -hmm. yeah, used. Yeah, that, that's very um, broad. If you go on Instagram, everybody has creative director in their right. bio. So I'm, I'm just a jack of all trades um, in the design world. Um, I had took off from Reckless Rebels for a while. Um, just uh, personal stuff and then also like business stuff. I took off for a while and then I was doing freelance work for people. I was doing a lot of graphic design work for okay. one, of my, one of my guys in New York. He had a store. Is that what you had studied at Tech? Man, I was doing uh, engineering, then I went to uh, business. You, yeah, you, I was doing engineering. Oh, you, you, then I you was trying to, to do. Yeah, we all. I think we all went through that phase of like, hey, go to school, get a, get a, learn something, get a job or something. Yeah. So, um, I was doing flyers and you know getting like twenty bucks to do a flyer and this, that, and the third. Because I just the, the fashion game was just taking a crazy shift. And mm. I was just like, eh, I'm not really. What, trying What to, point are we talking about? Because this was like. This was like uh, after the BBC ice cream era. This was like ball main and uh, uh, the, the beginning, yeah. the beginning so stages like of ball main. Like I'm talking YSL, not even Saint Laurent. I'm talking still YSL, pre Saint yeah, Laurent. Yeah, like 11, 12, 13. Yeah, like, like you know, like that. you know the leather, the leather pants and yeah, the uh, fucking Chelsea boots and shit. leather shirts and things. I mean, the, the high quality. I mean, yeah, everybody wanted yeah. a high quality brand and yeah. everybody wanted to mix materials and. Put lamb skin and yeah, the Chanel, cut and sew. yeah, I think, like, the yeah, cut and sew thing was stuff. really going like crazy. That was real big. Um, and I was just like, damn, I'm not really trying to be involved with this shift. Like, I'm, I'm not ready to, you know what I'm saying? So, mm. I took a step back just to regroup. I didn't, I didn't know if I wanted to keep the brand. I didn't know if I wanted to, you know, pick up. I didn't know if I wanted to, you know, move on to other things. I just had to do some reflecting. But during that time, I was doing um, I was doing design work here and there. Did logos for people. I've always done like uh, creative directing for people. Mm -hmm. um, and then I just kind of did just took off for a while. And I mean, you know why I, I did that. <laughs> right, right, right. For so, sure, for sure. I mean, you know, sign my fucking life away. But <laughs> hey, you know, 
Hey, I'm getting something <laughs> for it. <laughs> <laughs> nah, but look, man. Look, um, <laughs> so bring it, bring it, it, bring it forward a little bit more. Now, you've had an opportunity to, um, I say, travel the world, right? Yeah, you know what I'm yeah. saying. Um, nice places. Yeah, yeah, and um, a lot of times, a lot of people don't get that experience, that that opportunity. Yeah. How much of that um, had influence on like? Some of your uh, creative process. Uh, when you start seeing other places, not even just traveling the world, you can travel the country and yeah, for sure. You know, I mean, going that, going places. To me, the experiences is, is is the growth. Yeah, you, you know, know my my transition from even my transition back and forth from here in New York is just you know I'm missing out on stuff in New York because I'm not there, but where I'm living at, I can see the transition. You know, and mm-hmm. I, I, I've these past couple of years I've been living in a lot of different states. So, you know, but even, like, in other countries, you start seeing, like, damn, this is, you know, they, and, and the world is heavily influenced by us. Oh, for um, sure. Yeah. Everywhere you go, they take American money. It don't matter where you at, they take American money. I think we're the most used currency everywhere. Yeah, like, um, I mean, for sure. So we're, we're heavily influenced by, um, by culture everywhere. Everybody think we just live in some glam lifestyle here, and we just, it's the land of opportunity. You know, everybody want to live the American dream, you know? So, yeah, I mean, there ain't too many places outside of here where you can just say you can be whatever the fuck you want to be. Exactly. So And, and um, make it happen. Um, but, you know, going other places made me realize, like, you know, um, not to take stuff for granted, you know. Yeah. Um, but also, boarding my horizon. Because when I was younger, I'm like, yo, New York is the best place in the world. This is where I'm settling down whenever I decide to stop doing what I'm doing. I'm not never leaving New York. I'm staying here, you know. Now I'm, I'm like, like you're about the same thing. How you feel about that shit now? now? I'm like, man, the way the way um the gentrification is taking over, and and the rent is so high, and man, even went, purchasing is so man, high. Man, I went to New York not too long ago, m- month of my birthday. I was like, yo, this is like, it reminded me of going to any other major city. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Like if you've been to Miami, if you've yeah. been to New Orleans, if you've been to Vegas, if you've been to you know any of that. This, it was the same shit. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Like, and I was like, "Is this where this shit know, is going?" Bunch of people, dog. bunch of money. Yeah, also a bunch of poverty too. You right outside, saying? right <laughs> block Across away the street from each other right. now. You know what I'm saying? Because it's just they just buying everything and and upping the price of everything in every neighborhood now. And it's not just in New York; it's other cities too. Oh, for sure, other big cities, I mean, Chicago. Uh, LA no, no, anywhere with a high Atlanta, cost of living you know what I'm saying so <laughs> think about these places that the cost of living wasn't really that high and now it's out of nowhere it's just you know shit I, was, I mean even in little ass Augusta it's going up every year like I mean mm-hmm. there's some people out here paying crazy rent right it, it's not too far off from some of these major cities mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying from from what I from back in the day from you know when I first first came here me and my mom was just talking about it. I'm like damn this place is growing I mean, yeah. It's grown, but it's still growing. It's like it's so much stuff. I'm driving around and I'm like, damn it! A lot of this stuff don't even look the same, you know. Yeah, yeah. I've watched it, like you know, not being here, but being gone, coming back. I've watched it, you know. Every time I come back, I see new things and see different developments. And I mean, it, I I like it. Yeah, yeah. So now this is my second home. I mean, so. shit, you still come back. <laughs> yeah, it's niggas who never, you know, what I'm saying yeah. they they didn't turn their back and they out of here. Yeah. So they, nah, <laughs> man. I would never do that, man. This is where I figured out how to make some money. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I mean, saying? you'll always and have somebody here that. I got a lot of support. That, yeah, for sure. That, that give a, a damn about you. You know what I'm saying? Because there's a lot of places you can go and people don't give a shit. Yeah. I'm, man, a lot of people, I don't like to say that I'm from here because I'm not born and raised here. And that's why I say that. I don't want nobody thinking like, oh, he's shitting on Augusta. Like, I wasn't born and raised here, so I can't claim that title of being from here. I don't, I'm really like. With, with things like that, I don't like to use those terms loosely mm. um, because by the time I got here, I already knew a lot about life. Not everything, but as far as, you know, right and wrong, what I should and shouldn't be doing, things like that. Little like uh, the major life lessons mm. before you reach adulthood. So uh, and then because I left by the time I reached like full adult, adulthood. Right, right, right. So I like to say, you know, I'm not really from here. But they welcome me with open arms, so you know. Sensational. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, now, you know man. it's always love here, man. <laughs> it's always yeah, love. Is like, man, you you talking about you ain't from here? I'm like, yeah, I wasn't born and raised here. Like, I can't claim that, you know. Yeah. So. I understand, man. Look, it is what it is. You know, you you know it's always love, <laughs> man. 
You know, a lot. You know, some people say it ain't where you from. It's where you, you know, it's where you pay rent. You know what I'm saying? Well, shit. In that case, <laughs> <laughs> you know, I gotta, you know, <laughs> you've been a little bit. Of, you from a little bit of everywhere. In that mm-hmm. case, you know what I'm saying? So with um, at what point? So I know in in my personal experience with simply by design, right? Because you have Sim- record- simplicity by design. Oh, excuse me. Let me correct <laughs> myself. Um, simplicity by design. Are no, you good? Mm-hmm. Um, to me, that seemed very new, right? Um, and when I say new, I'm talking 24 months max, maybe, if, as far as... That was life. this year, man. I started that this Fuck. year. Damn, this year's been long. Yeah, it, yeah. And it started... It didn't even it, start... It feel like longer than that. I ain't even gonna flex. <laughs> it, it, it's been a long year, man. A lot of yeah. things have been happening. Um, but I started it because I just wanted to show like an archive of um, my design work. Mm. I was like, man, because I was trying to like cross over into like doing art. And I was like, man, I need to have some form of portfolio. I didn't want to have like a website that says like Wayne Designs or some Wayne is Reckless Designs or some right, bullshit. Right, right, right. So I was like, well, I'm just going to come up with a name and, you know, use it as my portfolio. And um, I started posting like past works like from years ago, not even new stuff. And um, I got good feedback, really good feedback. You know, people. I mean, you got some. Yeah, from like, what I've seen, it's pretty dope, bro. Yeah, like, so, um, I know I can't do it. So um, you know what I'm saying? I mean, I might, I might be reaching out. We probably talk some business, bro. You know, yeah. I need you know I need I something you. to you know. Got to holler at my I gotta, uh, creative director. You know, trying to build a brand here as well. I got to holler at my creative director. Yeah, hit him up. Check my schedule. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Openings. It started as an online like ar- archive mm-hmm. of old works, past, present, some stuff that you guys probably didn't see that didn't make the cut. And then uh, I, I really I like to sit down and figure out like how I can make things happen. Mm-hmm. Um, especially, I, I just hate to waste talent, waste my time. I mean, is it like, like more like bringing dreams to 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 fruition? Yeah, type that shit? too. Um, but also like we had the to the talk, the LLC talk. A lot of people are starting businesses and don't really know what comes after the administration, the administrative process. Mm-hmm. Uh, everybody's like, you know, you see LLC Twitter is like, oh, I got an LLC, whoop de do, you know. Right, now yeah, right. that's the real work comes after that because now you got to get. A logo, you got to get it trademarked, you got to get copyrights, you got to right, get right. things like that. So a lot of people don't really know things like that. Do you, oh, so speaking of copyrights and trademarks, right, um, have you have you seen a, um, a uptick in young creatives or up-and-coming designers stuff being stolen? Because I have. Oh, yeah, we were just looking at this video with uh, the Jordan 1 silhouette. Right. Um, that's going I, mean, I don't want to say that that's stolen. I um, mean, but it's it's a it's a like you said, it's a silhouette that everybody's familiar with. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like everybody's comfortable with it. Just Somebody like big, just like a oversized hoodies, oversized mm-hmm. sweats, oversized clothing. Now is getting big. Um, what else? Uh, hats with patches on the side. I see a lot of people are mm-hmm. doing like you know. Uh, I see the guy. I don't know his name on Instagram. He does. Um, he be doing Yankee fitters and he do his own custom patches. They pretty cool. And I see a whole lot of other brands is like doing that now. Yeah, like um, I've seen that brand that does like the upside down logos. Yeah, 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 uh, yeah. Even even like brands like Amiri. Uh I hate Amiri, man. <laughs> I hate it so much, man. No no shade to that guy, nothing, man. He doing he doing what he you know what I'm saying, he doing what he gotta do. You right. know, he he that brand is a gold mine. Um, I wouldn't expect nothing less of him. But um I'm more so mad at his creative team or who's designing because it's just it's, I'm seeing too much of other brands, too much yeah. of it. Like not I, not I even. I tend to run into like I look at brands and I can almost tell who their influences are. You know exactly. what I'm saying? I can look at it and be like, oh, I know you follow such and such, or you're exactly. a fan of carrots or whatever. <laughs> yeah, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Whoever the brand may be. Yeah, Amiri is just. Uh, he's just just like any other, like Saint Laurent or you know any other Celine. You know he copies Saint Laurent, Celine, things like that. I'm and in my mind, I'm like, well, what's the difference between him and Zara? Because Zara copy all these big brands. Yeah, Fashion Nova, all of them. You know what I'm saying? Stealing, all this know, fast fashion, shit. fast fashion is is just it's taking a huge like leap these past couple of years yeah. because p- places like Fashion Nova, Pretty Little Thing, Zara. H and M, things mm-hmm. like that. That's why if I buy a T-shirt from H and M, I wear it one time and it's going in the garbage after that. Or I'm using that to clean the house with. You know right. what I'm saying? Um, just because 
it looks good. Don't get me wrong. And it's cool if you know you need something for the but night it, or you out of town and don't. It's not to be kept forever. It ain't nothing you hanging up in the closet and, you know, like, oh, this the one. together. You like, feel this me? The, this the one right here. Yeah, like. and I be trying to explain that to people. You know, people like, oh, you don't shop at h and I'm like, I only get certain things. And they're like, oh, you bougie, this, that, and the third. It's like, no, I like quality clothing. But you know when you what you buying when you go into H&M. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? It's not that I don't expect you don't fuck with them. It's yeah. like I get certain shit from there. I like, know that if I wash this T-shirt, it's going to be a onesie out of the dryer. Yeah, like I know for a fact it might have been the overshirt when I bought it. It's an undershirt after mm-hmm. I wash it. Like that's what we know. Like Exactly. You don't go in there with the expectations of filling your wardrobe. You right, know what I'm saying? Right. I mean, no shade to anybody who does that. You know, um, I'm that, just, I mean, to me, it's a very for the night store. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. I needed yeah. this one. And that's piece. why it's still. That's why it's still. That's why it's still a big brand. For and that's sure. Why Fashion for sure. Nova is a big brand. That's why Pretty Little Thing, Little Thing, is a big brand. I'm, I guarantee, right now it's the twenty eighth. I guarantee it's a lot of girls ordering New Year's Eve outfits. Oh, for sure. On all those websites right yeah. now as we speak. Oh, for sure. They've been doing it all month. Exactly. So, and this is this is peak season so, for ASOS and, and right all of those. <laughs> Don't you know even what get saying? me fucking started. And I know for and and with, with us saying all of that as far as what we know what we're buying when we go to places like H and M, I've always looked at when you spend your money on something like designer, you know whatever the, it's intended to be kept, mm-hmm. and, and that's in my personal I got opinion. Pieces right? I didn't had so like for no years. different than buying like a Rolex or buying a designer belt. Mm-hmm. When you buy it, if as long as you don't lose it. Gonna you gonna last. keep it for life. It's gonna last too. You know what I'm saying? It's I mean, gonna, obviously you gotta take care of it and upkeep. I mean, for sure, like we're that. not saying run it in the ground. Yeah, but if you're somebody who take care of your things, it's yeah, gonna like last. Yeah, like you got a, a fucking Gucci duffel, you might, you probably gonna not gonna have to buy another one unless yeah. you just want to. Unless you just tear that shit up. Yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like it's it's a it's a piece that's meant to be kept. No exactly. different. Like when you got grandparents that pull out that 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 polo duffel, the <laughs> green joint. You know what I mean? Like the reason they still have it is because. It was meant to be kept. It's exactly. A, it's a quality piece. You know what I mean? It's meant to be bought one time. My uncle, all he wears suits. That's it. He said he ain't bought a suit in 10 years. And every suit he wear look new. You know, he spent money on them. Tail it. You know, all he wears suits. And we ain't buying them off the rack. That's what mm. I'm saying. Like, and it's people like that who influenced me and who, you know, who showed me, like, mm. this is what you, you know what I'm saying? If this is what you're going to be. This is what you need to do. You know what for I'm saying? Sure, like, for sure, for sure. Because I mean, I've always, I've always peeped you, man. You know what I mean? Like, you, you, you seem to be like a, a timeless piece guy. Yeah, I do. You know like what I mean? Like, things. I like no matter things. when I put it on, it'll always be dope. Yeah, yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, I, and I like new stuff. I like stuff that you know that been coming in. And I mean, I'm a you, real sweatpants person now. I really don't wear jeans anymore. You no, know, the comfort thing is really where yeah, it's at. Yeah, yeah I'm like, really, really cozy, man. If I can't wear sweats, I'm really not trying to go. Yeah, honestly. <laughs> yeah, I feel you. I feel you. Because anything else is like, God, I gotta get dressed. Like exactly. I, gotta I gotta put, put on like belt. clothes. I gotta put a belt on. Like I, I like the option to wear a belt, yeah, not yeah, like yeah. the necessity of having a belt. But the timeless pieces, um, it just make you feel. You know what I'm saying? It's like yeah. I got this. There's some you know, this archive shit. You right, know and there's saying? a story. Like, usually a story behind it. Yeah, yeah. You so, know what I'm saying? You ain't buying it from. You, you know, like you got some of that shit on now. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Oh, this, this, this reckless rebel right here. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. You, it, these some, some, actually, these G-Star, I had these for a while. They pretty, you know, pretty broken this, in. Man, them G-Star is probably 2014. <laughs> they might Everybody be else G-Star, up. they just got it from Macy's. <laughs> I didn't even know they sold G-Star at Macy's. The, if, when you go to the big Macy's. Oh, okay. The, yeah. the good Macy's. You can't I, go to regular I, I'm Macy's. I'm a big G-Star person, even now. Um, I fuck with G-Star. Yeah, they, they, G-Star make cool. good, they make good quality. I used to rock like super dry. Mm-hmm. Um, things like that. It's stuff like that that I still, you know, appreciate and like. But what people don't understand is a lot of these brands go under new creative direction, and that's when, yeah, and that's where and that's when the fit changes. That's when the designs change, and it's not as cool as you thought it was before. It's not mm-hmm. as cool as it was when you was on. When it you or, start looking at the next you know? collection, you're like, damn, what kind of yeah. turn they on? Yeah, like kind of like with you know when Saint Laurent did the transition, and you know they got new people over there now, and. Things like that. Yeah, so, you know. and I ain't heard their name since. But um, I'm no, they still doing no, good. I mean, I'm not saying that. They, of course, they're they're thriving. You know what I mean? They're making money. Mm-hmm. But you know, in reference to the culture, yeah, it, it's yeah. not what it was five years ago. Yeah, because everybody was screaming YSL, YSL, YSL. Now they didn't even know how to pronounce that shit. Damn. With the rebranding, it's just Saint Laurent, and they coming with it. They pieces is they got some pieces hitting. You know what I'm saying? So it's not it's not for 
It's not for them niggas that were screaming YSL, you know, you're definitely four correct. years ago. That's for, you're, you're right about that, sir. That's for people who know what they're getting. You feel me? Yeah. I'm what do talking, you, um, so, what do you feel like's next? Not even, not not for you per se yet. Who you want to get into culture? Or yeah, yeah, for sure. Work? Like, what do you see happening? Um, them, them, um, the, the silhouette with the Jordan ones, man. I think a lot of people gonna start doing their own shoes, man. I've seen a lot of, I've seen a, even, even some smaller brands do like one. the Air Force One silhouette. Yeah. I've seen I mean, that. You, get, you, you can, um, you can get on. You know, I got, I got this word from my homeboy from Declare Car. He was telling me that, um, because I was asking like, how the hell? Shout out we, to Declare too. Yeah, man. that's that's the homie. So I was asking him, we was talking about it, and I'm just like, I don't know where all of these, the influx of, you know, Jordan 1 silhouettes is coming from. He's like, man, these people, they go on Alibaba and just send a shoe, and they can copy the whole shoe. And I started, like, looking, and I'm just like, damn, they really doing samples for, like, $150. You get a Word? sample of a shoe. I'm like, what? That's this is crazy. What they That's how far it's gone? I'm like, they copying the whole shoe. I so, mean, but I mean, it, it makes sense, but just based on the counterfeit market, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Like it, it makes sense. And um, not even just shoes, man. They can get uh, art pieces and sculptures and bare bricks and oh, bro, like bro, I whatever. didn't realize, like even with them, them shits. Yeah, those. You know what I mean, you I was like, fake ones. I was like, what? Mm -hmm. Like I didn't know that was a thing, bro. The counterfeit market. Man, you remember the? It's a it's a trillion dollar market, bro. You remember the 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 fake Jordan? Era when niggas was getting like yeah when they was Gucci trash. on the jaw yeah like, and they was whack yeah. now you can't even tell like bro like this, this shit's coming a long way dog like oh my I, I'm, I was watching Vice and they had a uh, they had a segment on the guys who make the fake shoes and he was showing uh, Balenciaga triple S he had a real one and a fake one and you couldn't even tell the difference the shoe is so he's used they, they like yeah we use the same materials and everything it's just not it's just not an official shoe right it, it, it would didn't go through quality control exactly or, you know what I'm saying and that's what I was telling people about what fake is because you know you know I was in the shoe game hard mm -hmm. at one point you had a little you was reselling yeah you? yeah heavy and you I don't know, say right little now, you was reselling <laughs> yeah like for real I ain't got no shame in it shit um but now all of a sudden especially 2020. Everybody popping up with the shoe plug. And I'm like, and, and I was on niggas' heads out yeah. the gate. You know what I'm saying? Because I done really went through this shit. Yeah. Ain't no way a nigga who ain't never been about this shit yeah. pop up in 2020 talking about, oh, bro, I can just order it. These niggas the moment on, you say that, bro, I know I'm not fucking with you. These niggas wasn't on Nike Talk. These niggas wasn't standing right. in line for right. shoes. Right, you wasn't losing yeah. no sleep. Like, look, bro, we would go to the club, go to Waffle House, go straight to the mall, mm -hmm. and be out there all night. Now you got to enter a raffle? Yeah, you know what I'm and saying? We used like to have that. to pay niggas to stand in line and all this other shit. And you know what I mean? Like, I was really hitting up these dope boys like, nigga, I know you're wearing these one time, bro. Yeah. Let me get that off you. <laughs> you know what's crazy? That's why I respect Supreme so much still. It's because they keeping it like it need to be. Because it's always lines outside of Supreme. They don't do no tickets, none of that. You don't have to do no rap. I mean, but that's what we it's love. Like, you that get in line and you're you going to stand in that line. And you're going to earn, you know, whatever it is that you want to buy. And, I mean, it's cool. That's how you meet people. And if you look online, you know, people doing YouTube series on, you know, meeting their friends in the line at Supreme. Or right, in the right. Line at, you know, that's why uh, people be talking shit about Supreme and, you know, things like they come out with some I mean, everybody, uh, every, every, every single piece ain't going to hit. Mm -hmm. Like, I mean, that's just what it is. That's not possible. I mean, right. it is, but it's very I hard mean, to do that. But somebody's not going to like something. Exactly. It is what it is. But the fact that, you know, they, they the way they seasons work and the way they drops work and, you know, they, like I said, they have lines outside and mm -hmm. things like that. You don't have to go on a fucking sneakers app at 9 a.m. and keep taking L's on shoes. And I hate that, that I, man. I'd rather go stand trash, in line. Bro. Fuck, fuck the sneakers app. Bro. I'd rather go stand I'm in line. I'm on that shit, bro. I ain't hit on shit in a year and a half, nigga. Like, what the fuck? Are you serious? And you a, and you a shoe guy. Right, right, bro. I like... I, but see, I like the shoes on something like you know, you know how it is when it comes to shoes. When you like something you like, that's what you want. Exactly. You know what I mean? Like it, uh, you got people getting them for the wrong reasons. To yeah, this, like you, know. it, you see the guys posting pictures online with fifty pairs of the same shoes and. Bro, everybody mad at me. I'm on these local sneaker niggas' heads. I'm sorry. <laughs> I done been through this shit, As niggas. Niggas, niggas got DHL pulling up to their crib. I don't give a fuck. I'm Ooh, talking about all you niggas DHL getting box. them yellow pa yellow bags dropped off at their crib, and, and think we don't know. You know what I'm saying? Your one's got a weird ass lace bag and shit like that. Like, come on, man. 
Come on, man. <laughs> Don't play with me, dog. I ain't got time. You can't tell me where your shoe came from. What you mean? What you mean you don't know what? what? Oh, oh, my partner work at nah. Your partner can hold Nigga these work in nuts. China. Yeah, yeah. Man, you know what I'm saying. China. You ain't got no receipt. <laughs> you bought it though. Even, hey, the fakes even come with receipts now. Man, look, I ain't got time for that. Fake game. stock X tags. Man, look, I seen that too. We can spot them now. We, said, we, man. but when you up on game, like nigga, we, look, we know what's up. Everybody, and these niggas got fake QR codes on the on the side of their shit. Man. Damn, I, I, look, you gotta do all Shit's that. Just out of man. control, you don't need bro. To do it, man. But that's why. Why you think I don't need? I ain't only be pressed no more. If you gotta do all that, you don't need to do it. Man, it's too much. I, it, I told you, this counterfeit game's out of fucking control, bro. It's out of control. That's crazy. You know, but anyway, back to some authentic shit. Um, what is next for Wayne and Reckless Rebels? Because, well, before I even get to that, you've put out some pieces that I didn't. Mm, what's the word? What's the phrase? I want to say this right. <laughs> I mean, I guess that I just didn't expect from you. You know what uh, I mean? Maybe because I knew you for something um, that I could wear. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Um, at what point did you get to, you know, putting out this art? Like, when I say art, actual... Oh, you mean the print? Yeah, 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 prints. Yeah. Um, because I'm an artist, man. Um, and artists operate on different mediums. They're sensitive about they shit. <laughs> artists operate on different mediums, and I've been wanting to get into the art world for a while. I have art in my home. Yeah, you're um, definitely one of those guys. Yeah, I, I, I appreciate art. Anybody who's ever been to my, my place, wherever I've lived, I always have... A lot of art, my own art, other other artists' art. Um, I'm really into cars, that. toys, yeah, and all that. Um, prints, you know, fr I get everything framed. You know, I just like it. it. It helps me with my creative process, and I like to come home and you know see things like that, and you know continue to keep your, your juices creative flowing. Juices man. flowing. You know, and, you know, some people will come will come and say, oh, well, you you know, you're 30 years old, your house looks like a man, uh, who gives a like shit, like a you know, kid lives here, whatever the case may be, but. I mean, part, I think of part dollars, of being brother. creative yeah. is staying young, too, at the same time. Yeah. You know what I mean? And like, the moment you get out of touch, man, you, you kind of become lost a little bit. Yeah. And art is a huge investment, man, especially now since this this whole corona situation. Everybody's been buying art, man. And so you, have you noticed an uptick? Yeah. I mean, with, um, it's with whole, anything yeah. you do creative, with the, you know, in 2020? Uh. Well, the, the, the art I've been doing, everybody been, you know, buying. Oh, this nigga been killing Every, He been, been fucking the streets up for you niggas. I honestly, I honestly. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> he really been doing this shit. You know what I'm saying? Like. I didn't think it would it would get maybe, as big as Maybe this. now y'all just took y'all blinders off and really see what the fuck's going on out yeah. here in these streets. You know what I'm saying? I was kind of scared to uh to put out that first. My nigga, my nigga made like 50 to 100 <laughs> and I didn't get one. You know what I'm saying? He really <laughs> owed me a hoodie, a sweatshirt. Though. I, I do, really, I do. You know, I knew he was gonna bring that up. I knew he was gonna bring that up. And I had one on last night. I was like, man, he gonna say something about this, man. I said, man, he gonna say something about this, man. But I seen it. I ain't say nothing last night. Though. You know, you know, you was getting your little skate on. It's cool, man. <laughs> but, it's all good. Uh, yeah, man. It's just I didn't think. You know, I was I was doing it, and I, you know, I figured out how to get prints made, and I, you know, that's another thing I had to learn about. You know, getting different. Down to the paper you print on, the ink mm -hmm. you use, whether it's an original or uh, um, uh, uh, one of whatever. Mm -hmm. So I had took it took me a few months to perfect that. I had to get a couple of prints made and do quality control, and I finally pieced it together. And when I put it out, I said, "Man, ain't nobody gonna buy this shit, man." Like, man, it's a hundred dollars, man. Only only people like me are gonna appreciate this, and. You know what I'm saying? Now, so, wh which piece are we referring to? Is this the, this is the bottles on me one? Okay, the okay. First print I made for sale. Um, and then, um, I put it out and, you know, people was, when I, when I put the preview out, people were like, I cash up you right now for it. I was like, it's not out yet. And people were like, man, let me, let me cash up. Man, you let it. me pre-order this. So then like, I said, man, I'm going to make it, I'm going to number it mm -hmm. like a regular artist does. I was going to put out as many. Yeah. And I was like, well, if I do that, it's not going to be worth no money. Now, yeah. if I, now if I, if I number them and put certificates of authenticity, yeah, like a I mean, like a regular adds, artist does. That adds another. You know what I'm saying? I make it legit. Yeah. I was like, can't nobody, you know, and my shit came check with me a, with a certificate. You feel me? So, you know, in years years from now, when you know, a hundred years from now, and somebody finds that or it, it gets passed down, you know, and I'm, we're long gone. You know, that might be I mean, worth in that crazy. what makes something resellable? Yeah. <laughs> and, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, you know, when artists die, they they uh. 
They are just go up in value. Then we're no, not, I'm not asking you to go nowhere me. now. Please don't kill you know me. I mean? yeah, yeah, I well, don't take my man's out, man. <laughs> we we need him here. You know what I'm saying? Um, but yeah, when all this die, man, they, they they work go. You know what I'm saying? Um, Basquiat, all his artwork is going for crazy amounts. Oh yeah, I got my man's up there. He yeah, up there. Yeah, Andy Warhol, all his stuff going for crazy amounts. Um, even smaller artists, man. Like look at well, not Picasso's not a small artist, but yeah, he got. I know what you mean. You know what I'm saying? Um. So I mean, I, just, I hate the fact that the value comes when they're gone. Ex- I mean, that's just in life. Everything that happens. I mean, yeah, you know? yeah. Like you was talking about giving people flowers before they, you know. Yeah, I got, I got to, bro. I got to give you your flowers while you're here. Because, I mean, shit, Wayne can't feel that shit if he gone. Exactly. People don't realize that, man. It's so you know what I'm saying? Like, I, I got to give y'all, y'all, y'all's pats on the back, man. I got to let y'all toot y'all horns, man. Because, one... You can always look back and say, you know what I did? Pop my shit. If you don't never say nothing, bro, like, who heard you? You right. You know what I'm saying? Now, of course, we do want to let the product speak for itself, but shit. These days, you know, becoming more in tune with the person behind the, the creative direction or the, the idea mm-hmm. is even more essential these days. And everybody wants to be remembered, you know. People can lie and act like they don't want to be, but everybody wants to be remembered for why something. They, why you, you think niggas post pictures every fucking day? Exactly. You People want to be remembered for something. Post so. throwbacks and shit. So you know, when it's my time to you know see my maker, I want people to be like, "Well, damn, that was a creative genius." Or you know, I want people to have great things I to mean, say. But th- I mean, even if even if you don't become a Basquiat or a Warhol, I mean, if I got a piece on the wall uh, from Wayne. <laughs> and Wayne not here is I'ma still be able to forever talk about this piece yeah, on my yeah. wall that Wayne brought to yeah. you know what I'm saying that, that, that you brought to life yeah you know and that's dope you right. know what I'm saying and um back back into the art though um so I did the prints and then I did the the actual canvas when I did the the money um those real ones yeah they real real money oh, shit so if i, I really ever, know how many so if i ever go broke i can just like smash that motherfucker I mean, like, after them you shit buy up. one you know yeah i mean yeah I, uh, I gotta buy one to save the money you know what i'm saying but, the wall. you feel me i did that i just did that it was for personal um i didn't know how it was gonna come out um i kind of just did the canvas and then i sat at it for a while and i'm like damn like i need to put a powerful message on here and um it was bo- so I did the root of all evil one after the dreams money can't buy. Mm-hmm. So the dreams money can't buy came to me because um, so I was in a store and um, I, I was at like Walmart or some, something like that. And I never told nobody the story, but I was in the store and there was a lady behind me and uh, no in front of me. Sorry, I was behind the lady. She was getting something and I guess she was having some issues with uh, paying for it. And it was something small. I think it was like maybe ten dollars. And I just kind of paid for it. I didn't know what her situation was. Mm-hmm. I I think I was just in a rush, honestly. Um, I don't want to sit here and act like I'm a philanthropist or nothing. But, I mean, but <laughs> but um, I think I was kind of in a rush. But I was like, well, you know, let me do my, my 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 uh good deed for the day. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I paid for it. It was like ten bucks, and um, I just kept on. And dreams money can buy came on the radio when I uh, started the car okay. out of Walmart, and I'm just sitting there. I'm listening to it. I'm just like, that's what I'm gonna put on that on that because I was just sitting on it for a while, and I was like, that's what I'm gonna spray on that uh, on that canvas, and um, because I was gonna put dreams money can buy, and then I said, nah, I'm nah, gonna put dreams you. money can't buy, um, because I haven't acquired the things that I wanted, you know, I haven't purchased everything that I want, I haven't got everything I wanted, so I, mean, I still but, got dreams. But even once you do, is is <laughs> is it over? Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like the bar just gets set higher, right? Like. We the bar just keep going up. So, um, yeah, that's how that piece came about. And then the root, the root of all evil one just kind of came after that. You know, everybody know money is the root of all evil. Mm. So that kind of just went hand in hand with, with that. So I just made the pieces match. So the dreams money can't buy is not for sale. But I put I did five of the uh, I did five of the root of all evil ones just because people, so many people were inquiring about it. So I said, you know, I'll do five. Keep it limited. Um, five is cool. It's a cool number for a canvas that big is 36 by 36. It's pretty oh, big. Oh, it's huge. Shipping like $250 anywhere. Ugh. Yeah, so. Mm. But I sold those. Got one in the house. Um, yeah, I mean, you got to keep one. Archive it or mm-hmm. something like that. Yeah, but the, the the whole art thing is just just me tapping into my, my inner, you know, um, just in case. I mean, it's another layer to yeah, your creativity. Exactly, you know what I mean? You know, like you're um, adding a branch to the tree. And that's kind of how I exactly. look at it. Exactly. So, because a lot of people, you know, 
when I, like I I say again, a lot of people use this creative director term, mm-hmm. and you know I, I I'm on here and I'm like, well, what are you doing as creative directing? And I'll be looking at people profile, and you know they're just taking a bunch of pictures, standing pigeon toed in front of um <laughs> wherever. You know what I'm saying? That's just not me, man. I, I can't do that. <laughs> that's whack. Yeah, yeah that's I, you know, just a bunch of pictures standing pigeon toed in front of dumb shit. You yeah, know? yeah, in the so, in the middle of the street and shit. Exactly. In traffic. So, um, I'm just trying to, you know, fill that fill that in in my resume because so, I, I really do this. You know? So, what's next though? What's next on the in the in w- with your creative process? Are we, are you going to continue to? So I'm, I, uh, I, actually, I guess perfect all of these things. Yeah. So the top of the year, I got some more art coming out. Um, Reckless Rebel is at ten years this year too. So I got something Ooh, doing. Man, shout out to you on that. Yeah. And and I was talking to a few friends about it. And they like, damn, Reckless Rebels is is ten years old. I'm like, yeah, but you got to understand, brands take a while to you know. Yeah. Pop, I mean, you know, everything um, no ain't just no microwave shit. Yeah, no it's fly not by no, night, like, You know what I'm saying? So. You know, no longevity in and that it's shit been a anyway. Long ten years, man, and even me designing, I've been designing for over ten years. So, and I, I was looking at, you know, I got a hard drive with all my old stuff on it. I look at it from time to time to see like if I could recreate or if I could just look for reference. Mm-hmm. And I look at a lot of the stuff, and I'm like, damn, like this was really ass. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> this is really it, drop that Joe Biden line. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, but two pack of ass. But you know the how far you've you come. About? Yeah, stinks. but everybody grows, you know. Yeah, you know and how far you've come. from Everybody that. grows, man. Everybody grows, and everybody moves on to bigger things. And you know, if you're not if you're not trying to grow, or if you're not trying to learn every day, then you know you're doing something wrong for sure. So, and I I, I say, in the past ten or twelve years or so, every day I've you know perfected my craft every single day. Um, even now, I'm still perfecting my craft. So, um, and that's what I'm trying to. That's what I'm trying to um, create with simplicity by design. Everybody want to start these brands, and I, you know, obviously this uh, pandemic has started a lot of people with you know starting their own companies, and I'm loving it, man. Mm-hmm. No, it's but it's great to see. A lot of people are. I think a lot of people are just moving into it too quickly for one, and then yeah, also I mean, for the I, wrong I think reasons. Some of it is trendy. Yeah. You know, so, what I mean? it's a it's a it's a really a upstart in in uh, people with saying that they business owners and things like yeah, that. Yeah, like, like I, I, there, to me, there's a difference in supporting black business and supporting a good black business. Yes, yeah, because because I mean, I'm tired of seeing motherfuckers saying they got a business and they sound like Ithaca draws. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, I mean, a business is anything you you know making some so, some sort that. of profit off of, but don't act like a crack dealer is a yeah, he, he yeah. has a business. Don't act like you at the Factory sewing them, them drawers yourself. Right, right, right. Like yeah, like you I buying put, them from a wholesale, so you wholesaling them. And you know what you feel me? Like I don't. Yeah, I like, don't put so much creative, creativity, yeah, no, time, no, and no, effort no. behind this piece right here. You looked at a line you know sheet, I mean? you ordered them, and now you have X amount, and you sell it. Man, they they was chatting on online with buddy from Alibaba, bro. Ali oh, Express, on the clubhouse. <laughs> But yo, Clubhouse is a cool platform. No, no, no. If it, if it, it can definitely be um, <laughs> be utilized uh, in a great way for mm-hmm. sure. Um, there's definitely a, a lot of I guess free game that yeah. can, you can learn. Yeah. I, I Clubhouse is like this, just without the interaction. Yeah. So it's it's just like as if we were doing a a live podcast with people who can ask questions. Yeah. So we can be we we would be the people in charge of the room. And then the people in the audience would be the people that's in the room, you know, requesting it. You know, I, right. I think you can like raise your hand to speak in Clubhouse or something like that. I don't really, I don't really know. I haven't broken down yeah, yet. Right, I right, right. I haven't. And my friends been, my, all my, yet. all my business friends been trying to put me on, and it's just like, uh, there'd be a lot going on in a lot of these rooms, and I'm just trying to figure out how I can use it right, to my right. advantage. Because social, another thing with that, people don't realize like people think they need a crazy marketing and and. Uh, Marketing budget for things when the the biggest marketing tool you got is free. It's Twitter, it's Instagram, right? It's it's, Facebook is what we walk around with Bro, in our hand all so the time. So many like, people make money off of these sites, and I hate when I see people like just. Don't get me wrong, I love Twitter, man. Mm-hmm. Twitter might be my favorite out of all of them, just because there's so many funny just, people in this world. Free world, but at the same time, it's like you have to you have to watch how much 
you have to watch what you're consuming and how much time you you know using consuming that energy on these on these platforms. Oh, for sure, for sure. Don't memes are cool and you know funny shit is cool, but people run to Facebook with all their drama, their family drama, and things like that. If anybody follows me on any social media, you see I don't ever speak on any personal things too much. Um, maybe once in a blue. Um, I, mean, I might see you celebrate. Yeah, maybe that once in a blue. E- e- even, even accomplishments, I don't really, you know, speak. And I'm not even talking about them. I'm <laughs> talking about celebrate like, nigga, I, I, we're having do say yeah. today. <laughs> like, like, yeah, I mean, it's just, I, I don't really want to, you know, seem like it's just, I don't want to just be a social media junkie and, you know. I mean, yeah, like, bro, when when we when phones start giving you that update about your phone consumption, mm-hmm. like how long how long your shit's like lit, mm-hmm. and you realize like I've seen people look at their phone that shit say like seventeen hours yeah. in a week. But I, I use and I use these platforms because if I didn't have these platforms, I wouldn't Reckless Rebel wouldn't people wouldn't know about Reckless Rebel. You know what I'm saying? I wouldn't have visitors from all across the to, pond. You're lo- utilizing it to grow, network, monetize. You know, um, yeah. get feedback or you know yeah. what I'm saying like. It's forever going to expand the brand. Exactly. You're not using it to dilute yourself with and I ain't bullshit. Sitting, and I ain't sitting here saying, like, I'm all business. Like I said, you can follow me. I'll be on that. I mean, but if you know shit. Wayne, bro, like, look, <laughs> when we talk business, we talk business. You know what There's saying? a time to work and a time to play, you know? Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, even with my with my little one, man, I'd be like, yo, look, we can do whatever you want to as long as the business is done. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? It's your world, squirrel. You know what I'm saying? Once business get done, we can, you know, we yeah. can toast to whatever and right. party let's like a motherfucker, you know? You know what I'm saying? Because the last thing I want to do is party and having to double back. Yeah, but don't nobody want to do something again or go and double back and... Yeah, a lot, a lot of people of just be on these sites and, you know, I watch people just, even even like my sister and my nephews, and I'm just like, what are y'all doing on Facebook all day? Like, <laughs> it, it can't nah, be they, that much. They, there is a way to spin it. Into helping grow whatever they are, do yeah. desire to do mm-hmm. and stuff like that. But that takes effort. Shit. Once you fall down that rabbit hole, you got to rework the whole algorithm to get them get your exactly, shit right. Exactly, bro. A lot of people don't be realizing that, bro. That's the best thing that you can use, bro. And it's free. You don't have to hire no no firm. Because if you come hire me for some marketing or something like that, I'm a you gonna pay. <laughs> I mean, hey, you gotta. You, you got to pay. pay to play. You know what I mean? Even with me creating the podcast, bro, people was like, bro, where did you? I said, bro, YouTube University. Dog. YouTube fucking University. I That's learned what... so much stuff on YouTube. So much Man, stuff. like. YouTube like, and forums <laughs> and things like that. I was like, there's too much free game out here. Free. You know what I'm saying? There's too many people we actually watch. And you ain't asked yourself, how are they actually put giving, giving this, this content to me? Like these people that be paying for people to uh, fix their credit. I see videos bruh. on YouTube. They literally show you how to do it, I like wa- for bruh, free. I watch it. I watch that shit. Like there was a, you know, I've I've dedicated. You know, we've had so much time in 2020. Oh, I've dedicated it to different portions of my life that I knew I needed to get more knowledge on. Mm-hmm. And credit was one of them. Stocks. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Shit like that. And I was like, yo, like you really paying these people to to send the credit bureaus letters that you can pay letters on your own. that are online. All you gotta do is fill your name in them. I mean, I'm pretty sure they're doing a little bit more stuff, but I mean, like I said, like, like, like Batman right. Kevo, don't get me wrong. I fuck with Batman Kevo. Yeah. He getting paid. He's Man, smart. Bruh. But he got a only he he utilizing the biggest platform right now because of the pandemic, which is OnlyFans. Only yeah. He's utilizing that to put people on to the credit game. Now, with him, I could kind of respect him because I mean they want to he, hear it from a nigga like him. Yeah, he giving out, but he giving out gems on him. I seen a little pre because he got a YouTube channel and then he do the OnlyFans too. Yeah. And I've I seen I've seen the YouTube and I'm like, well, he giving a lot, he giving a lot of free game. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So if people do decide to subscribe to his OnlyFans, you know, I'm guessing it's from the the YouTube. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. But he he gives a lot of information on YouTube. So I do, I you know, I kind of respect him, but you got to get your money. I respect. Yeah, I mean, him. if you if they gonna pay you to give you. You got to get your money. With, you know what I'm saying? Like I, like I charge for consultations uh, when people want design work. Your and some, time is some, money. Some would say like, oh, you charge people to have a conversation with you. I'm like, well, I got a lot of projects I'm working on at one time. So if I need I need to stop doing a project to do a consultation Bro, with you, you got to pay for that. I mean, look, all, all things creative are time consuming and time is money. I don't care how you slice it. I don't care whether we sit down having conversations like this. Um, or you sitting now asking somebody a whole bunch of fucking questions via FaceTime. All of that shit costs mm-hmm. money. 
You know what I'm saying? And people got to understand that if you desire somebody's time, somebody's service, should they give that to you for free? Mm-mm. No. Even if, if they do, I personally feel like you should find a way to reciprocate it. Or it should be mutually beneficial mm-hmm. or some, there should some, be some, some sort, sort of, of exchange. Yeah. No, you know what I'm saying? Everything doesn't have to be dollar for service. It could be service for and service. A lot of, that's what a lot of people in their mind, they thinking, oh, I don't got the money to pay. But if you got knowledge, knowledge is power, bro. If you know something that I don't know and you can let me know, that's, that's a form of you paying me. Right. You know I, but I mean? a lot of people would just be like, I ain't got the money to pay. It's not about the money. You know what I'm saying? A lot of right. people don't realize it's not about the money. Um, and then they, you know, they get wrapped up in, you know, other bullshit. So, and when I, so, you know, me with the consultation, obviously that's a, do, that's a dollar amount. But um, let's say if I was doing something with another big brand and we can, you know, bounce off each other, then it would, you know, it would be a different setting. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, but a lot of people who come to me are trying to establish brands and, Things like that. And I always give them. understand the value. And I give so much free game, man. You can ask a lot of my, you can ask a lot of people that work with me, that worked with me before. Um, I give so much free game. I mm-hmm. give them so much advice. And I, even down to, you know, when, when I'm creating logos and things like that, I'm letting them know this might not work. You know what I'm saying? So we're not wasting time. I mean, if I you mean but to you have to do that. No different than you know, anybody that rap or I don't care if you're an architect. There's somebody yeah. that's going to say, potentially say, hey. This might not be it. Mm-hmm. But there's places out there who going to make you spend your money and know your and shit not going to pop. Bullshit. Or give you some some uh, some shitty work, you know what I'm saying? And then, bullshit. Then you, you you know your shit don't pop like you think it like you thought it was. But they weren't you know honest with you. They were down so, to take your money. I don't like but that. But I mean, it, but see that's why there's I think there's a difference in being a creative director and um being somebody that just, just wants to do it, it. You, you know, and a lot of people see people online and, you know, they say, my niece said the other day, she want to be an Instagram influencer. I was like, well, what the hell is an Instagram influencer? She's like, you know, just take pictures with, uh, you know, Fashion Nova and stuff like that. I was just like, yeah, you got to go to school. <laughs> I was like, you got to go to school, man. I can't. Period. <laughs> you got to go to school, yo. Because yeah. that's what you looking up to. I I'm, mean, I'm, but like, to me, they... they they looking at it from a very shallow because they don't see the, the the you know they don't know what goes on behind closed doors. Right, right. They don't know like, what, like, what. It's like, oh, I want to be a vlogger, but like you scared of the camera. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like she, you scared to walk in Walmart with a camera in your face because you think people gonna be look looking at, at you, you funny. Yeah, like it's you know? like you got to get over that. Like if you really want to do some of these things, really invest the time to figure out what steps are they taking mm-hmm. in order to reach this destination. Don't now all of it. them aren't gonna work for you. Don't just do it because you see. Just don't do it because you see people doing it, man. Because yeah, I mean, is it is it is it you? Dog, like, I, I was, want people to be them. I don't I was, care what that. I does. was in school. I was in school for architecture. I wanted to be an architect so bad. Mm-hmm. Um, since I was younger, even before like designing, but and I, I mean, realized, I think there's still a form of architecture in what you do. Yeah, but. and I realized that. I think that was kind of what my mom wanted me to do, um, mm-hmm. and that kept her. I guess that kept her kind of happy, you know, because um, I've always liked, you know, designing, building, any like in, even interior design. Like, you know, people come to my house and always and say, that like, may have been where the, 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 the architecture or, you know what I'm saying, the architect yeah. thing may have come from, you know what I mean? But when I realized, like, you know, this is not what I really wanted to do, and I started, like, working on stuff that I wanted to do, and I'm like, you know, maybe I should have started this earlier. You know, maybe, you know. I mean, I think I, I I look at, I think the same way in hindsight. You know what I mean? Like, I think as a culture, we have to spend more time allowing our children to perfect the things they're naturally drawn to. And parents really don't, if you talk to anybody who's creative, it's always been a hard time with their parents, getting them to understand, like, I mean, I un- unless you have a parent that's also yeah. creative. Like, it's, like, if my mom was an artist, she probably would have been like, okay, well, then yeah, I know you want to be a love, designer, like, you know. Yeah. Cause I'm successful. We, at it. A lot of us come from a household of you go to school, you you go to college, you get a job. Like bro, life is a scam anyway, bro. Right, Maybe. and it's like I wish, in hindsight, of course, like that, it was more spent on like, like, hey, what is something you would do forever, even if you didn't get paid for it? Mm-hmm. That's designing for me. You know what I'm saying? And that's and the only thing that you I, take that 
and monetize that. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like my daughter loves is in love with dresses, bro. Mm-hmm. Like I'm never gonna take that from her. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? She she's big on fabrics and sequins and colors. Got a little fashion and, design on you. You know head. what I mean? Like everything she is is like everything she does is putting outfits together. And you know when we go to the mall, like she's she's touching, she's putting things together. I don't want her to lose that. Yeah. I would rather figure out, okay, I'm like, shit, nigga, do I need to get a sewing machine? She could be the next Celine. You know what I'm saying? Like, do I need to figure out how to make, like, dress? Like, do we, do we need to learn how to make dresses together? Like, mm-hmm. what do we, what do I do? You know what I'm saying? Because no matter what she decides to do with her life, I want to be able to, for her to monetize something mm-hmm. that but nobody can take from too, her. Though. Right, exactly. Yeah, but you want to be happy. And if you're happy, the... The money will come with it. Right, right, so for sure. A lot of people focus on the the, the, the prize and the, the uh, because, like I said, they see people who make a lot of money doing the things that they want to do, mm-hmm. and they jump right to it. Like, oh, I can make a lot of money selling this. Like I can all make these a chicks lot selling, lash, selling that. lashes and fucking waist trainers. Yeah, and I can make a lot of money. Weave uh, and shit. I can make a lot of money buying clothes and selling them like fashion over. It's hard to sell clothes, man. Yeah, yeah. I tell you that right now, it's hard to sell clothes. People don't understand that. People are like, oh, I can print a shirt. I thought that. Oh, I can print a shirt, and that does not make boom. that shit fire. Print a shirt, nor put it does it make it worth thirty, forty, man, look, fifty. Man, if look. you want a hundred dollar sweatshirt, you don't. You better not. Hey, look, this one I got on. I think this was this is eighty, seventy dollars, seventy two on the website. You know, and I had and, people, you know, complaining about that. But bro, this is sun dried everything. I did all this. I see you got the over dyed look. Yeah, the, bro, this is all. Know, this is this is we, art. We've we've talked about this stuff before. People don't be understanding what they're investing in, and, and you know what? If they want to be naive, it is what it is. Yeah, it's you know not for you. Mean? Yeah, you know, it's it, not, it, I can't. I can't. Just like I everybody. told when Libra sat down with me, I was like, "Look, you might not fit the bill. Mm-hmm. That that's might, just it might what not it be is. for you. You know, right? You might you need know. to go to H and M and get you a hoodie." Right, and, and call it a day. Maybe mm-hmm. you appreciate that more, and you wonder why you got to still wear a t-shirt, a long sleeve shirt, and a thumb roll under it, under it. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, that, but I'm not going to do that. But And you know what, Wayne? At the end of the day, brother, I want to make sure, you know, uh, I thank you for being here with me today, right? I want to make sure thank me, man. I give you your flowers while you're here because <laughs> niggas can't feel that shit when they gone. You know what I'm saying? I want to make sure to... People look out for simplicity by design. You know, reckless rebels. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Because um, there's there's a lot more to come. You know, there's only one place to go, and that's up. You know what I'm saying? Because I done been the lowest of the lows, man. And I tell people all the time, like, even people who, you know, starting businesses or starting ideas and things like that, like, you're going to fail, man. I had times where I felt... I mean, failure's part of the process. Man, I had times where I was down... You know what I'm saying? That's part down of the process. To, down to last everything. Down to, you know what I'm saying? Like hurting. And if then, that was the case, basketball players would have it real bad because they don't make every jump shot. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? But a lot of people can't deal with that rejection and they can't deal with that failure. And especially people who are so used to being good and winning and things but like that. But were they good? Were they, good were they really winning? That's a good question. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to always question it. You know what I mean? Like, were they really that good? I, I'm and I'm someone who's learned to, I don't want to say accept, but I've learned how to deal with having some sort of failure. I mean, I look at them as lessons, not necessarily. And that's failure. what I was. That's what I was getting at. Because if I if I stopped every time I failed, then I wouldn't be in the position that I'm in now. You wouldn't be moving forward, bro. Exactly. You'd I'll be, be standing still, staying right where I was at when I was. And you know, there's no growth in that. And I still have my times where I'm, you know. Feeling like, damn, you know. Like I said, I'm coming up on 10 years for Reckless Rebel. I see another, brands. another bomb for the Reckless Rebel. I see man. brands Decade that... in the game. I see brands that have been, th- been out here three years or been out for three years and bigger than my brand. But I'm not focused on that because... I mean, but what is big, though? What is big? Is well, it, big is it now every time is, you, is, is, inst- is social media, man. I mean, but what it to me, big is every time I drop something, I can't hold it. It's gone. No matter yeah. how many of them I decide to give to you, they gone. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, it ain't, oh, oh, everybody rocking my shit, but I done gave 200 of these bitches away. Yeah. I got another 200 in, in, in product inventory. Yeah. Well, so, speaking of that, I was I was looking up, you know, the Telfar brand, with the bags that all of the girls mm-hmm. are wearing. Um, they've been out for a while, man. Like, I think 
I I don't want to. You can correct me on this, but I think it's like 1999. They have, and that might be the the year the guy was uh, born that created it. Mm-hmm. But I'm pretty sure they've been out for a few years, and now their bags are starting to like go crazy. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So, who's to say like, you know, they haven't been out what five, six, seven years, and now they finally getting, you know. You know, now they got, they can't keep bags. You know what I'm saying? Right, right. It just, it just takes time, man. I mean, and even now, the brands are like, no, no dip. I think, you know how them fashion waves go. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? In our younger days, Von Dutch and Ed Hardy was hot. Man. Now I Von remember, Dutch is back again. $120 you know t-shirts. Now they t-shirts 40 bucks. You know what I mean? Like, and Von, niggas is rocking Von Dutch now. And and, and it, it left for like years. Pff, that was a, a decade. big gap. That was a big gap. You know what I'm saying? Like. It, and it's back. Like Von Dutch, Ivizu. I yeah, see Travis Ivizu's Scott be wearing Ivizu all the time. Um, you know what I mean? People is desiring Jabot jeans. You know what I mean? Like people just buying them off eBay. I bought a pair off eBay. <laughs> 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 he said he bought. I did though. I did. I mean, I did. they were my size though. It's nostalgic my size for time. you. I bought this. I bought the. I bought my size though. It takes you to a. I cert- do the it takes you to a time. Yeah. It takes you, know you to what a mean? time back then. But I can put that shit on. But. I'm gonna have to it, check back with you on that. Because if you come slacking, I'm, <laughs> I'm, you come slacking, I'm look, on you. I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm look, under the gonna, picture with it too. I'm letting everybody ah. see it. I'm letting everybody see it. Look, we're not editing this out either. <laughs> so look, if, I, if it's shots fired by Wayne, bro, I'm gonna accept them. It is just what it is. I ain't wearing no vests out here. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But um, but yeah, man, like before we get up out of here, bro, make sure you let everybody know where to find you at. You know, um, where to, um, if they desire your services, where to, how to contact you and all that great stuff. Uh, you hit me up on Instagram and Twitter is Wayne is Reckless with a R, all together, no spaces, no hyphens, no nothing. Sensational. <laughs> and then my company, uh, Simplicity by Design, we do uh, branding, marketing, logos, tech packs for you clothing people out there, uh, label design for you people who provide products to people. Uh, we also do flyers for events, things like that. Uh, and then Reckless Rebel, my clothing line, you can follow us at um, RecklessRebelCo.com. Same thing for uh, Instagram and Twitter. And um, I I reply back to everybody. Uh, I appreciate you guys for, you know, checking it out beforehand. And if you need me, I'm here. <laughs> hey, man, look, he being modest, man. Y'all, mm-hmm. y'all, look, y'all motherfuckers trying to build your brand. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? You need some help. With presentation, things of that nature, you know, um, whether it be getting your creative ideas down on some kind of digital paper so that it could become something tangible. Look, hit my man. You know what I'm saying? He said it the way I should have said it. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, for those who don't know what he's talking about, because he used some terms I ain't heard. I ain't know what the, how to properly say that shit. But look, we're, we're here to, to help each other out, man. We're here to build black business. We're here to make each other great, man. And, um... And as always, before we get up out of here, y'all be safe. That was good. That was pretty dope. That was good. That was good. No, I had fucked up a couple times. Man, look. I got to get used to this podcast shit, man. Yeah, this I had to get used to it, my third one. Too. You know, it, it does take a little bit of getting used to. You know what I'm saying? That was, that was dope, though. Yeah, I enjoyed that. That was good. <laughs> that was funny. That was oh, good. Man. Ugh, shit. Man, look, man. Make sure y'all hit my man's up, man. <laughs> some of you niggas shit was trash. <laughs> I'm gonna just say that. Man. You know. And if y'all disagree, it is what it is. If you got something to say about it, you can come see me here. <laughs>